Welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python library for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. This video builds on modeling an insurance portfolio and will explain more about how to build an aggregate probability distribution using DECL. So I've moved over to using uh, Jupyter Lab. So everything is installed on my own machine. We don't have to go through the installation again, but remember that's just a simply a matter of pip install aggregate. Also, you've got documentation on read the docs and the source code on GitHub. So last time we uh, built a uh, small portfolio of commercial auto business. Um, I'm gonna recreate that here, call it commercial auto 10. I remember it's, it's good to split your uh, deck programs over uh, multiple lines. They get concatenated together automatically in Python, uh, but it makes them uh, more readable to do that. So we had 10 claims, uh, we had 10 million excess of zero, um, severity were working in thousands. Um, we had a severity distribution that was uh, log normal with a mean of 50 and a CV of four. And we had a Poisson frequency distribution assumption. Um, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but I need to, uh, uh, in import from from aggregate. We start with this import build and the quick display function. And then we can uh, build this distribution and look at the diagnostics. So this is what we've seen before, um, where we've got our frequency, severity and aggregate, uh, we see uh, nice tight uh, ranges around the relative errors, the validations coming back is not unreasonable. I remember this is using uh, 64,000, so two to the 16, 64,000 buckets and each bucket of size one quarter. So maybe we would wanna see, you know, $10 million is, or 10 million is a, is a big limit. Maybe we would wanna think about working with a smaller, maybe a million dollar uh, limit. So again, in thousands, let's just uh, make this change and we run this through. So now we see the severity has decreased from 49,804 down to 45, uh, six, uh, 75 is kind of what you would expect uh, because we've got the, the lower limits or lower limited expected value. Um, we see that the relative errors here are both very low, 10 to the minus seven, 10 to the minus uh, nine. In fact, they're lower than what we had up here with the $10 million limit, but validation is coming back and saying it's failing validation. And the reason it's failing validation is that the aggregate error is suspiciously larger than the severity error. There's no reason why the aggregate error should be larger, and so it's flagging that uh, on, on uh, that, that event. It is telling you that you've got acceptable uh, errors on the aggregate and the severity because of the uh, relative errors here are, uh, are indeed uh, so small. Now we can partly see what's going on here if we, uh, let's delve into the density DF data frame. So remember the 64,000 simulations, they all live in this uh, A1, they're not simulations, sorry, the, the, the sample of the distribution, uh, all live in this uh, data frame. Um, and it's indexed in 16th, so zero bucket, a 16th, two 16ths and so forth. Um, P total is our discretized aggregate distribution and we've got P sev, which is our discretized uh, severity distribution. So it's instructive maybe just to, to plot a couple of these out. So let's plot uh, the total and the p -sev, Um And let's plot that uh, with a log uh, on a log density basis. It's, you generally see much more of what's going on on a log density than you do um, with uh, just a, a normal linear scale. So what we see here is the blue line is the total and the orange line is the severity. We see the, the big spike of probability at the million dollar limit that leads to a, a bulge here in the uh, aggregate distribution. Um, and we see this goes out to about sort of 10 to the, the minus nine at 4,000. So uh, 64,000 buckets over 16 would be 4,000 is the largest uh, loss here that we can see on the right hand side. Um, and that's coming in with a uh, density of around 10 to the minus nine. Now we could also look at the uh, survival functions here. So let's just um, pull that down and let's look at S 
is the survival function in SSEV. Okay, so now we see um, the probability that you're greater than a loss greater than 4,000 is around 10 to the minus 6. And quite clearly, this, this distribution, there's no reason why it should just end here. This, this clearly should sort of carry on. And that's what the error is picking up. You see the errors are also around 10 to the minus 6 here. And that's the sign that we don't have sort of enough space for the answer coming out. And you also notice there's a, the, the different shape. So the log normal, very thick tailed and is, um, in fact, if we plot the 10 million uh, version of this, you'll see, okay, the log normal is, is uh, a log um, convex uh, distribution, con curved, uh, curved up, very thick tail. But then once you get past the limit, the Poisson kind of kicks in and it, and it falls off much more quickly. And uh, we see that more clearly here in the, 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 the million, you, not so much room for the uh, severity to express itself. But this sort of looks like a suspicious point. We would like this to continue out. So the way we can do that is we can update this distribution uh, with a larger bucket size. So this is updated with a 16th. Um, here we updated with, uh, on the 10, we updated with a quarter. So maybe we sort of split the difference and try updating this with an eighth. Uh, and we, we just do this, and then we can look again at the diagnostics. Now it's passing. Validation is not unreasonable. The severity and aggregate errors are basically exactly the same. And so we would expect when we plot this, we should we should see a picture that yeah, there we go. It looks uh, it's it's coming down to now this this sort of flat line here is we're getting down to the machine noise error that you have with the first Fourier transform uh, operation. There's sort of no no way to get to precision much beyond that. But you're down to a sort of ten to the minus eleven, ten to the minus twelve level. So that's a very good picture of what that distribution looks like over an enormous range that would be impossible to get uh, some of these extreme values out uh, using simulation. You, it would be possible, but you would need a very large number of uh, simulations. So that's uh, uh, examples for, for today. Um, I do want to just show you one other thing, which is how uh, you can actually get a report to help you decide what bucket size you want. There's a uh, uh, data set you can create uh, called the aggregate error analysis where you give it the number of buckets that you want to do. So we'll let's give it uh, 16 buckets here, two to the 16 buckets. Um, so it's going to center us around, this is an eighth, this is a 16th, 32th, and so forth, up, up to a half. So we're sort of centered around where we thought the bucket size should be. Um, it's then going to, it's recomputing the aggregate with each of these different bucket sizes. Um, the first column here is the theoretical mean, that doesn't change. The second column is the estimated mean, and you can see if you have a very small bucket size, you're going to have way too much truncation, you get a very big error. Um, this column is then the absolute uh, error in the mean. So once you get down here to a 16th, um, an eighth, that's looking very good. In fact, an eighth has the lowest uh, absolute uh, uh, error. And then we've got our relative errors, it also has the lowest uh, relative error. And um, we can also look at the discretization error. That just gets smaller as h gets smaller, whereas the relative error in the mean, um, as h gets smaller, you don't have enough space, so that, uh, that actually increases. So we end up with a total error that's kind of U-shaped, and you can see, in fact, the uh, optimal point for that would be uh, right around here, an eighth uh, or, or a sixteenth. So this, that's a way, uh, that's some, a tool that's available to help you choose um, the bucket size once you've selected uh, the number of buckets. So I think that uh, is what I wanted to go through for today's video. Thank you.